We have the Moleskin watercolor album from their art collection. This is a hardbound sketchbook. It's got this nice elastic band on the front. It's just a plain black uh, cover on the back. You can see it's embossed with the Moleskin logo. You can open it up. This is kind of the classic Moleskin uh, thing on the front. You can write your contact info here. This uh, paper, it feels um, a little thin. You can see that the pages are in signatures. And um, this sketchbook has uh, 72 pages. It's uh, 200 uh, GSM or 135 pound paper. And it claims to have um, 25% cotton content, which is always good for watercolor, gouache, and things like that. I always like some uh, cotton content. It's cold pressed on both sides, so there's a bit of a texture on both sides. I think you could say it, it lies flat, so if you want to paint across the gutter like this, you definitely could. In the back, there's a little envelope for you to uh, keep mementos or business cards or what have you. I like this band. This is a nice, nice sturdy band. So I think that's it. Let's take it outside and do some sketching. So it was a beautiful sunset and I thought, what better way to inaugurate this sketchbook than to get all whirly and swirly with some watercolor on this first page here. This is really just a uh, loose, wet and wet fast sketch. You know, this is really what I wanted this sketchbook for anyways, was a sketchbook where anything goes, where I can be loose and not worry about having a perfect painting. And I really liked how this one turned out. I also took this sketchbook with me uh, on a little trip and did some urban sketching just to capture some memories. Here's a little pen and ink sketch. And then another thing I was wanted to experiment was with heavier paint. You can see this is primed with green casein. Of course, you could paint um, gesso or some other priming agent on there and uh, other than just experimenting with different colors of uh, primer and underpaintings I also wanted to see how this paper would hold up to something like that and um, I think for gouache and any kind of a primer that you wanted to put down uh, it really held up really well I think that's where that texture on the paper uh, really comes into play really nicely the thickness of the paper it wasn't too thin uh, that it buckled under it. In fact, I think it did really well with this application, maybe better than any of the other situations. So the other situation that I wanted to do was kind of your traditional classical approach to watercolor where I'm leaving the white of the page that's going to be kind of the foamy waterfall area and the reflections in the water. And I'm going to do multiple washes of color working my way towards those darker tones. So we're really applying layer after layer and um, this is kind of a test for the paper to see, you know, will the paper hold up to multiple passes of color. And um, I was really actually pleased with how it held up. As you can see, I'm doing multiple washes here and um, the paint didn't bleed through and the paper didn't buckle too badly. One of the things that you can see here is that as you use a lot of water, you kind of get this buckling in the paper. And so that's kind of what I was talking about with the paper being a little bit thinner, especially with wet washes. Now I found that to be true in the case even when you're mixing watercolor and gouache, this still has a little bit of buckling. Now I will say no paint comes through the back, so you could paint on both sides. Now this urban sketch that I did while I was in the car, um, because I was using a water brush, I don't think that it had as much buckling that I can see. I want to show you this example utilizing pen and ink. So you can kind of see the texture of the paper that I had mentioned before, but this uh, paper takes pen quite well. So if you want to draw in pen and ink and watercolor, I think that the sketchbook would hold up. This is another one where I use the water brush and uh, yeah, you can see, I think if you go on with multiple layers, I think that's where you will start to see some of that wrinkling in the paper. When I did this painting, I actually had primed the page with casein. And if you'll notice, the page is basically perfectly flat. There's really little to no buckling or wrinkles whatsoever. Sometimes you get a little bit of bleed in the gutter here in the crease. And so again, just something to be uh, noticed and to know about. If you'd like to buy this sketchbook, I will leave a link for it down below where you can get your own to try it out. If you're just getting into urban sketching, check out this video here where I actually talk about 10 tips that will help get you started with urban sketching. In the meantime, remember, you have a voice that matters. Go be creative. I'll see you next time.